Greetings and welcome. Many eons ago, I asked my followers if they would be interested in seeing a time lapse of this recent watercolor piece I did, and also whether they want to see just a sped up version, or have me explain the mental anguish I went through to bring this piece into the world. And the results? And so without further ado, let's get right to it. This piece, like so many others, started out as a humble sketch. No, not that kind of sketch. Thumbnail sketches. See, I try to spend less than a minute on each and just spitball the composition, pose and layout ideas. Only then do I proceed to do a rough sketch, after which I refine it, and then I use a light table to transfer clean line art to a thicker sheet of paper, after which I ink it. Now, I didn't actually decide to record myself painting this until after the unmitigated disaster that was the first attempt at coloring the background. But let's break down exactly what went wrong. I started this piece by adding first some light color washes for the blue and orange of the background, going over the figure where I know the light from the glow would cast highlights. From there I proceeded to color the main figure, <laughs> big mistake, and then the idea was to cover some of the lighter areas in the background with a darker paint and have it smoothly transition into brighter areas. However, as you can see, the transitions became muddy, unclear, and dirty. This was partly due to the fact that watercolors will reactivate when exposed to water, and the transition technique requires gradually spreading the darker paint out with water. This causes the underlying color to start mixing with the new color. Now, normally if this happened, I'd just give up and move on. However, because I still had the original sketch and the means to copy it to new paper, I decided I'd try again with a different approach. Before starting the time-lapse footage, here was my strategy for attempt number two. Because the failure of the first attempt was due in part to the previous layers reactivating with water, I decided one way to overcome that would be to use acrylic inks for the blue and orange colors. Acrylic ink looks nearly identical to watercolors at a glance, but the crucial difference is that once they dry, they will never reactivate with water again. This is great for if you want to use a lot of water over areas you have already painted without the color starting to run again. But the downside it comes with is that once they dry, you are forever stuck with whatever result you get. And they tend to dry quicker than you may think. Starting out with the background, the first thing I do is to wet the entire background, but not the figure, so that any color I put down will naturally spread out and create even gradients. Next, I put down the first thin layer of color that will mostly just tint the area slightly. Because any ink that ends up drying on the page will stay there forever, I'm careful around the edges of the figure. Next I start adding slightly more colors around the edges of the fish. This will make the fish itself seem brighter by comparison, adding to that glow effect I want. You'll notice that the paper starts developing some buckles, and that is because the paper I'm using isn't quite thick enough for the amount of water I'm using on it. But that's a mistake we'll come to a little later. Here 
Here I dab the paper with some paper towel to remove some excess color where I want it to be lighter. And a blow dryer to make it dry quicker. Apart from just making the process quicker, it helps me to judge whether my values are correct, because watercolors and inks tend to become lighter as they dry. Now for the second round of darkening of areas around the fish. By painting on dry paper, I get cleaner, harder lines right on the edge of the fish, and then I spread the ink out with water to transition smoothly outwards. Now here is a quick glimpse of my paint palette. You'll see that there is still some paint left over from the previous attempt and here I am remixing the darker color slightly and just making sure I have enough paint. Now to start filling in those dark areas. The areas in between the two fish is going to be the darkest and then we'll gradually lighten the closer it gets to the fish. Again, I wet the paint to help with smooth transitions so that the paint flows easily, and I add water to the edges of the color to make it fade out more. After allowing the piece to dry, I went to work trying to soften the edges of the dark paint I put down, and I tried to up the contrast further. And it was at more or less this point that I realized this looks like shit. <clears throat> the transitions were still dirty. The buckling paper was lifting the tape at the side and it simply wasn't working out. Thanks to this, I realized that the problem wasn't entirely attributable to the previous colors reacting with newer ones. I realized that in order for the transitions to look right, the transition zones need to be white. It can't have orange or blue underneath. So what this means for me was that I would have to put both the bright and dark colors onto the page at the same time. And cue. I decided to do this attempt's background color entirely in acrylic inks. I decided this because I felt they were a little more vibrant. However, in order to prevent them from drying while I'm working on them, I would need to douse the page in a lot of water. For that reason, I chose paper that was double the weight of the previous two to work on. I take care to ensure that the water does not go over the lines of the figure, otherwise the color will bleed onto it and I won't be able to fix it later.
Again, a light layer of color for the tint, but this time leaving areas blank. Now I add the dark color, but I make certain not to brush areas with orange. Rather, I let the colors naturally bleed into each other, pushing each other away as they merge and giving a clean transition this time. Same for the blue color, although this is a little bit more forgiving because the dark tone is also a shade of blue, so I don't have to worry quite as much. You will see me adding water to areas of darker color to help push it back and create interesting patterns. When adding water to wet paint, it will always push the pigment outwards as it spreads, and this can be useful for creating highlights or bleed effects. Another reason it's important for me to keep adding water is to prevent the ink from drying and becoming unalterable while I'm working on it. Going in for the second pass, darkening the area around the fish and adding more darkness.
the background more or less satisfactory, I now proceed to redo the figure. I decide to start with the shaded areas. Since watercolors are a transparent medium, the darker color will still be visible if I paint over them, and painting over them will give them a slightly softer edge. Next, I start adding in the colors, deepening the shadows where necessary.
and it was at this point that I thought to myself, why am I doing this over when I have a perfectly fine version of the figure still lying around from the first attempt? And so it was that by the power of technology, I combined the best aspect of each attempt and produced the final result. So, uh, making this has been quite a journey. It is the single largest video project I've worked on. Trying to make progress on it in between studies, work and other obligations. But if even one person is interested in knowing more about my process or wants to see more, then that is justification enough for me. That being said, I know only a handful of people will watch this, and out of those, even fewer will watch until the end. It would really be appreciated if you could share this around, recommend it to someone, or just let me know what you thought. So, thank you all who watched me suffer until the end, and I will see you again in the distant future whenever I manage to make another video. Until then, and remember, the heart will come anytime.